You have two. You have two, Bradley. Go. Two. I've had back problems for a long time in my in my life to the point where I started noticing that um, I felt some numbness in my body, in my mostly my legs. Um, that's where I really was losing feeling and getting really concerned about, you know, what was going on with me. I went to go talk to my um, local physician. I couldn't I couldn't lift my leg very you know all the way, maybe about 75 percent. I could lift my leg at this point. And so she's like, oh, it's a you know, nervous, maybe a nerve problem, so you should probably go get an MRI. And that day was a pretty big day for us because it, it was when we first discovered that I had a tumor in my back. My first thing was, you know, will he be able to walk? Will he be able to move? Will he be able to be himself? Will they be able to, you know, effectively take out the tumor? Will, will, he, will he die? And that's when I thought, we have to go to Hopkins. Like, I just want to get a second opinion because the first physician gave us a 50-50 chance of him being able to walk again. Um, you know, our whole world was turned upside down. Brian had come in with an MRI that revealed that he had quite a large tumor around the T6 area. In this case, given that it appeared to be a neurogenic tumor, made a diagnosis of a schwannoma very, very likely. And therefore, typically in cases where the schwannoma is symptomatic, causing injury to the spinal cord, this treatment is a surgical resection. He knew exactly what to yeah, do. Yeah, it wasn't like he ever questioned himself. Yeah. So that made me feel very confident in everything. And he gave us like in detail specifically what he was going to do, which was really good. In terms of the surgery, in his case, essentially the spinal cord was being stretched out to almost a thin wafer. We really couldn't put any additional traction on the spinal cord without causing potential paralysis. So what we did was what we call a lateral extracavitary approach, where we come in from the side to essentially remove the rib head and expose the area around the lungs and the aorta to have a very wide working view to make sure that we can resect the tumor safely without injuring the spinal cord. That also allows us to chase the tumor to make sure that we're not leaving any tumor behind given that he's otherwise young and healthy and we want to at least attempt the gross total resection of the tumor. After he was done the surgery, he like started to recover really very fast. Yeah, they, um, remember they had he, me walking within like three hours yeah, of the surgery? Yeah, it was like really quick, like starting to like get up and stand up and just kind of seeing, you know, what, what feeling he had. In patients with neurological deficits, such as Brian, the rehab is arguably just as important, if not more important than the surgery itself. So we made sure while he was here that he did well with the physical therapist, that he was ambulating okay. And that was the surprising piece where initially the thought was that he would require inpatient rehab. However, he made such a quick neurological recovery that we had set him up for home therapy as well as outpatient therapy. If I couldn't hold my son and be able to walk down the street with my wife here, if, if we couldn't do that kind of thing, it would, it would be heartbreaking. I'm grateful that that 50-50 chance turned to an 80-20 chance, and then that 80-20 chance turned out to be 100%, so it's pretty cool. <laughs> uh, again?